Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I am back again. Yes, it's the right time, the right place for today's Kev Baker show. And boy, oh boy, have I got a lot of news to get into today. But just before we came on air, everything got thrown up in the air, and I'll, I'll get into that in just a moment. It's the joys of doing live radio, folks. It's the do joys of sit in for a good few hours preparing a show and then somebody, something throws a big dirty spanner in the works. But never fear because I'm still going to get into this in just a moment because I still feel it's really, really important. And if you want to join us over at the TFR, the Truth Frequency Radio chat room, please head on over to tfrlive.com forward slash chat. It's filling up just nicely, and before it gets too full, I'm going to give a few of the people over there a quick shout-out. We've got Lynn, TFR, Wookie, King Sweet. King, I was thinking about you today when I was reading the news, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, I was uh, informed by one of the red top tabloids in the UK, I think it was the Express, that somebody had broken into Buckingham Palace during the night while the Queen was sleeping. Uh, and we know we've had a laugh and a joke before with King Sweet about the royal family and things. And I must admit, dude, I burst out laughing and I was thinking to myself, I just wonder, I wonder what King Sweet was up to last night. And I won't tell you what he said in the chat room, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> You'll need to head on over there and find out for yourself what he was saying. Let me take a little drink here. Got one of those frogs in my throat just as I go to air. That's typical as well, right? Ah, ah, yes, there we go. <clears throat> Getting there. Hopefully I don't joke to death halfway through this first segment. No, I'm only joking, folks. I'm only joking. But I want to thank you all for turning up again today. And see, I got the chat room done just in time because now it's absolutely filling up quickly as heck. So, earlier on today, I was really, really shocked. And it's not often that I get shocked nowadays when I'm taking a look at the news that's doing the rounds. And I came across a post from Paul Joseph Watson. Now, Paul Joseph Watson obviously works with Infowars with Alex Jones. And he has recently branched out on his own and he's got something called Summit News. And I like to check in on Summit News to see what's going on. And I'm going to play to you the video that Paul put out earlier on. Now, it might have been yesterday, it might have been earlier on today, but there's been a lot of updates since this has happened, folks. But I still want to play this video from Paul Joseph Watson, because this all relates to the Facebook community guidelines. And what's been going on, like I say, well, it's shocking. Take a listen to this. Now, let me just pause it there, folks, because I honestly thought when I first heard this video and when I first came across this story, I, I thought Paul must have it wrong. Surely it can't be as bad as what Paul's making out here. So at the time, I went over to the Facebook community guidelines page and I'm glad I took a screenshot at the time. I sent it to Joe Joseph and Scott Lopez as well because I was truly shocked at what I was seeing. Now, I say I'm glad I took a screenshot because it has now been changed. Now, I'm going to go over what it was and what it is now and why this is so important, folks. But this shows you the audacity of Facebook, you know. The fact that they were literally encouraging people to break laws in this country, in America, and I'm sure numerous other countries as well, where it is against the law to basically call for violence, to make death threats. They were basically saying, if you are on Facebook's dangerous individual list, then it's fair game. People can say what they want about you, whether it's violent, whether it's death threats, 
whether it's anything they want. Now, as you can imagine, Twitter, social media, Alex Jones was covering this today. A lot of people have been covering the fact that basically Facebook were green lighting the left to go after anyone on the right. Now, I get that there's it's a bit more kind of convoluted than that, and it's not just people on the right that have been banned, folks, okay? In fact, when you dive deeper into the new Facebook community guidelines, you'll find that all of Antifa are, are now going to be banned as well. Now, I, I try not to take sides in all of this culture war that is going on, but man, oh man, did Facebook try to really change gears today and go for it. Now, thankfully, because of the reaction, they have watered down their initial changes that they had made to the guidelines. And we're going to take a look at it right now. And I'm going to read to you the wording that came from the original post, the one that Paul Joseph Watson was talking about there. And for anyone who might have just joined us, we're talking about the Facebook community guidelines changes that up until about an hour ago were telling people it's okay to make threats of violence, to make death threats against anyone that was on Facebook's dangerous individuals or organisation list. Now, we're going to see what it takes to get put on that list in just a moment. But back to these actual posts. And like I say, in the last hour, this has now been changed. They've totally diluted it after a public reaction. Rightly, the public reacted to this. And when you hear this, there's, there's no way you can't be shocked when you hear it. So what it said previously was, and it's relating to violence and discrimination, do not post threats that could lead to death, and in brackets it's got any other forms of high severity violence of any targets where threat is defined as any of the following. Number one, statement of intent to commit high severity violence calls for high severity violence. And get this, this is the important part. So it says calls for high severity violence. You can't post that unless, unless the target is an organization or an individual covered in the dangerous individuals and organizations policy. Now that's why Paul Joseph Watson was basically saying that Facebook had issued a fatwa against them because he happens to be one of the people on that list. And there are many people on that list, let me tell you. And I'm sure a lot of people out there might think it's all people from the right, but it's not. It's probably the majority of people from the right, if you still look at left and right that way. But this covers a, a broad section, folks, and we're going to look at what puts you on that list shortly, like I say. What makes you a dangerous individual? And in turn, what makes you fair game that Facebook will say, it's okay, crack on. You can issue death threats against these people. They're on our list. You're good to go. Don't worry about the fact that in the UK, under the kind of Digital Media Act, that it's breaking a law to threaten violence and incite violence. Don't worry about that. We're above the law. We're encouraging you to do that. You'll be okay. Mark Zuckerberg's got your back. You see the audacity that this mob have? You see how powerful that they think they are? And I've got a few thoughts about all of this, folks, but we've not really got into this yet because it goes on to say down here, um, this is still dealing with previously what was posted on the Facebook community guidelines. So you cannot post, make posts including content where no target is specified, but a symbol represents the target and or includes a visual of an, arraign, of an armament to re, re, represent violence. And it says you cannot post aspirational or conditional statements to commit high severity violence unless, you guessed it, unless the target is an organisation or individual in the dangerous individuals and organisations policy. Now it goes on. It says threats that lead to serious injury brackets, mid-severity violence towards private individuals, minor public figures, vulnerable persons, or vulnerable groups where threat is defined as the following. 
statements of intent to commit violence, statements advocating for violence, unless the target is an adult figure convicted or accused of certain crimes or is a member of a dangerous organisation. So, wait, let me just read that again. So you cannot post, right, where, where um, violence or where a threat is defined as a statement advocating violence unless the target is an adult public figure convicted or accused of certain crimes or is a member of a dangerous organisation. So are they saying there that it's all right to call for violence against people who have been accused of specific crimes? That's okay. Guilty until proven innocent in the Facebook court of law? Cheers, Mark. That's weird, right? And of course, it's got the dangerous individuals again, okay? But it says here, you shouldn't be a threat of violence is a call for mid severity violence. Now, I'm not sure how you rank these levels of violence, but we'll get to that in a moment as well. But you guessed it. Unless the target is a member of a dangerous organization. And this includes content where no target is specified, but a symbol represents the target. It goes on to say aspirational or conditional statements to commit violence. And you know what's coming next, folks. Unless the target is Paul Joseph Watson, Milo, Laura Loomer, um, all the rest of them, you know, Jones, anyone that's been banned, anyone that's on this dangerous list over there on Facebook. It's okay. You can stand up and you can encourage people to go out and attack them. Wow. So it's okay for that to happen, yet at the same time, you know, it's okay for Facebook to encourage this bullying because that's what it is. They're encouraging and inciting cyberbullying at the very least. And sometimes that cyberbullying might be enough to trigger somebody in the real world to do something stupid. Yet at the same time, if me or any of you out there listening right now go and post a picture of Mark Zuckerberg and we jokingly claim that the guy might be an alien, he's got algorithms out there hunting down, seeking and destroying any hateful memes against him and his company because, God forbid, you hurt the feelings of that corporation or Mark Zuckerberg himself. But it's okay. In fact, we encourage you. We give you a green light to go and start the purge against anyone on the Facebook list. You see how dangerous this culture war is getting. But I have to question why now. And obviously, like I was saying at the start of the show, things changed about an hour before the show went to air. And now the post over on Facebook, it reads a whole lot better than it ever did before. Because it says here now, do not post threats that could lead to death. And in brackets, other forms of high severity violence of any targets where threat is defined as any of the following. And it goes through statements to uh, intend to commit high severity violence or calls for high severity violence, statements advocating for high severity violence and aspirational or conditional statements to commit high severity violence. They have taken out the language, the instruction, telling people, but it's okay if these people are on the dangerous or dangerous persons, dangerous individuals, dangerous organizations list. Absolutely unbelievable, folks. So we come back to Summit News, and this is what Paul Joseph Watson has wrote just before we came on air here. It's just up to two hours old, this. Facebook has deleted a policy, updated, that... Um, Informed users, sorry, that informed users it was acceptable to post violent threats against people deemed dangerous individuals by the company. And as we highlighted yesterday, a community standards update published by Facebook on July the 9th, do not post, and it says, threats that could lead to death and other forms of high 
severity, violence, or any targets where the threat is defined as one of the following. And it goes into what I just read out there, folks. And Paul's got the screenshots as well. Unless the target is an organization or individual covered under the Zuckerberg hate list. And it doesn't matter and it shouldn't matter if you absolutely despise Paul Joseph Watson or anyone else that happens to be on that list. Maybe you're thinking, ah, hell mend them, you know, the, the abuse and the cheek that they've given other people in the past that deserve everything they get. Don't be like that, folks. Don't, because this is, this is a really dangerous precedent that Facebook tried to set today. Uh, and I think the reaction probably shocked Facebook. I, I really do, because they seem to think right now, and for some time, that they really are above the law. And in a, many regards... I suppose they are, because Zuckerberg, in effect, what is he? Yeah, I'm sure he's a genius coder and all the rest of it. He went to university and done that stuff. I'm not questioning that. But at the same time, he's also a very useful idiot. He's a stooge. He's a front man. He's working for your CIA's MI6, Mossad, Five Eyes Intelligence Agencies. Because all of them... All of them have got their grubby little mitts into this data mining operation, which might look like a social media website on the front end, but it's very much an intel gathering operation on the back end. Now, I've got a few things written here. I find it quite, not suspicious, but worthy of note that this all comes a day before Donald Trump has his global media summit at the White House. I find that interesting. And there's something in my head, something in my gut telling me it's no coincidence. And I'm wondering, are they trying to bait Trump? Are they trying to cause some problem, reaction, solution here? Which will result in Facebook getting exactly what they wanted all along? Think about it this way, right? Think about it this way. This social media summit, it's pretty much weighted towards the conservatives that have been silenced and the alt-right, as they call them, who are going to this media summit tomorrow. Now, they're going to air their grievances. They're going to have it out in the White House. And no doubt Trump is going to come up with some idea or another on the back of this to, to sort things out. So what if, you know, Facebook are trying to push Trump to the point where he basically says they are going way too far here? We know that the White House and some of Trump's team really like Paul Joseph Watson, okay? So they'll have seen this video. They'll know what's going on. And are they trying to get Trump to react to the point where he, he ends up threatening to break up big tech? Because then Zuckerberg and his as uh, SJW cronies, they, they can all sit and cry about how they're being censored by Trump the dictator, right? You, you can see how that would play out. They would cry victim. Oh, look, look, Trump's been the dictator. We said he was. He's taking away everyone's free speech. He's coming in. He's closing down this digital public square that we've all got. Blah, blah, blah. And the media that are all in bed with Zuckerberg, they'll all parrot the same tune. And they'll program enough people to try and make them think that, yeah, Trump's been a dictator here. That's one angle I was thinking about. The other angle is, of course, that, you know, regulation is definitely on the horizon for Facebook and all of these big tech companies. And I, I actually think Zuckerberg and Facebook, and I've said this before, but I think they're really looking forward to regulation. Why? Well, because despite the fact that lobbyists are banned, illegal lobbying still goes on. And big tech, I've got big pockets. And that's big envelopes full of cash going to the politicians, left and right, that are on Capitol Hill. Point being, any regulation that comes from government, Facebook are going to have a big hand in writing it in the first place. And you know who it's going to favour, who it's going to suit, folks? It's going to suit Facebook. And it's going to kill any chance of any competition coming up in the meantime or in the future to rival that data mining operation. 
Another way of thinking about it, and I don't know what's going on, folks. None of these things could be happening. I don't know. But it just feels like there's something more going on here. And could it be that, at long last, perhaps they're going to take the corporate mask off the government operation? The government operation that Facebook and social media always was. What the hell's Kev talking about? Well, we talk about the fact it was NQTEL money, CIA front company money, DARPA, Department of Defense. All these people were the ones piling money in to these big tech startups in the first place, Facebook included. We keep going back to Scotty Lopez and the story he found about the life log from the Pentagon closing down miraculously on the same day that Facebook started up. So are they going to now, government, step in, break social media up, make it into almost like some kind of government utility? Doesn't make sense when you first hear it, right? But then you start to factor in the Libra, the Facebook coin, and the fact that, you know, this would end up with something like Facebook if it was even still called that. It would be like your electricity or your water, right? It would be a public utility as opposed to being one of these private corporations. And because it would almost be a government-controlled utility, they, they wouldn't, I'm not saying they would make it mandatory for people to have a Facebook profile, but I can think of incentives that they could offer people to go on to Facebook and have their profile and keep all of their information there. And if government was to get involved in something like that, wouldn't that be brilliant for them? A one-stop shop where they can make people, anyone claiming benefits, etc., have an account, pay them via their Libra wallet. That's how you corral more and more people into, whether it's Facebook or whether it's called something else by then. But make no mistake, this world we're moving into, this system of governance where it's technology-based, it needs the data. And as much as I would love to see Facebook disappearing tomorrow, my only fear is that there would be another one just waiting around the corner. Problem, reaction, solution. Remember, these ones we're up against, these cats that run all these companies and make all these agendas, they're far from stupid. And they do. They look way down the road and they get ready for any eventuality. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're tuned into today's Kev Baker Show. If you've just joined us, we're moving into the second part of the show already, and I'm getting on my high horse about Facebook's latest shot in the culture war. But thankfully, just thankfully, they, they pulled back their volley. And I think it's probably because, I mean, they must have hundreds of lawyers at Facebook, right? Hundreds of like people looking at anything they come out with, any statement they make. And how this was ever posted in the first place is beyond me. I wouldn't be surprised in the coming days if we find out somebody from Facebook has been sacked over this. Because it just seemed so outrageous. And folks, it was the Facebook's own official website. It wasn't some spoof website, anything like that. There's many, many people have captured this when it was on there. They've made videos about it. But the wording of it, as I'm sure you were thinking when you were listening to me saying this, have we entered into some kind of la-la land where, where Facebook and these big tech companies can basically say it's okay to call for violence against people if they give it the green light? And Paul Watson mentioned that it's actually against the law over here in the UK. They, they were encouraging people to break the law. And we've got something over here called the Malicious Communications Act in 1988. And if you come down here in the first segment of this, you don't have to dig too deep into this to see what I'm saying is right. It says, number one, an offence of sending letters, etc., with intent to cause distress or anxiety. Number one, any person who sends to another person a, a letter, an electronic communication, 
or article of any description which conveys a message which is indecent or grossly offensive, a threat or information which is false and known to believe to be false by the sender, or any article or electronic communication which is, in whole or part, of an indecent or grossly offensive nature, is guilty of an offence if his purpose or one of his purposes is sending it is that it should be so far as falling within paragraph A, B, and cause distress or anxiety to the recipient. So what Paul said there, he wasn't hyping things up. I'm telling you right now, the wording of Facebook's community guidelines for a number of hours today was breaking the UK Malicious Communications Act. But they're Facebook, right? They can just get away with it, okay? <laughs> That's the way that they act, though, isn't it? It really is. They do act as if they're just a law unto every... Well, they're, they're above the law, basically. And then we come to this whole thing about what makes you a dangerous person? How the hell do you end up on one of these lists where basically you end up getting persecuted and a, a, a target put on your back, you know? So there's a website here called reclaimthenet.org and it's an article from just last month, June the 14th. And it says here, how to be a hate agent according to Facebook. Need to get some uh, Red Bull in me before I get into this one. Keep giving myself wings, you know. And no, I'm not sponsored by Red Bull. I wish, but not yet. I'm only joking, folks. It says here, how to be a hate agent. Oh, this should be interesting, right? I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, folks, they don't set the bar too high whatsoever. And I imagine a lot of you listening to this, when you hear some of these things, you're going to be thinking, uh-oh, there's another list that I'm on. According to a document recently supplied to Breitbart News by one of Facebook's employees, yes, you see... There are real good people within Facebook who must be sitting there absolutely disgusted at what's going on right now. We see some of the whistleblowers that come forward to Project Veritas and stuff like that, and they do some awesome work. I know they've been criticised for the way they've edited things in the past, but I still think, on the whole, brilliant work they're doing. But there are real people in there, and they're getting pissed because they're just like us. They're just doing a job and they're not happy with what they see. It says it was revealed that the social media giant is monitoring offline behaviour of its users to filter them as a, quote, hate agent. The document detailing the information on Facebook's policies for categorising somebody as a hate agent is titled, quote, hate agent policy review. Doesn't that sound like something out of a manual in 1984 from the Ministry of Truth? I'm telling you, man. It says here are a few criterion considered by Facebook upon monitoring offline and online behaviour to determine if someone's a hate agent or not. You ready? Let's see if we pass the hate agent test, shall we? Praising, interviewing or appearing together at an event with a wrong individual. Now, a wrong individual in this case is subjective to Facebook's definition. So right off the bat, we have this really vague comment, this vague rule, where <laughs> if you have praised, if you've interviewed, that, that's definitely a category I'm sitting here thinking about now. I've had over a thousand guests on the show. So if one of those thousand guests have been deemed a wrong individual by Facebook, I'm a hate agent. But just by praising, interviewing, or appearing together at an event with a wrong individual, that's enough to get you on there, okay? And again, wrong individual, anything Mark Zuckerberg decides. If he doesn't like the look of you, he doesn't like your postings, you're a wrong individual, and that means anyone associated with you is guilty. Just by, just, just by association, you're on the list. You're a hate agent. And what does being a hate agent get you? It gets you death threats. It gets you people inciting violence against you. Like Paul Joseph Watson said, literally a digital fatwa gets issued against you. This is crazy, crazy times. So it goes on to say here, the next really kind of uh, 
the next um, th crime that you can commit to get yourself onto that list is self-identifying or advocating for a hate group such as Islamic critic Tommy Robinson. So, posting or liking a group, maybe say Britain First, that were on there, they got banned a short time ago. And I don't get into politics and things, folks. You know that's too divisive and I find it terribly boring. So, don't think I'm making this political or anything. It's just an example. But if you'd like that group, then you're a hate agent. And I remember at one point, the British National Party, uh, terribly, terribly, let's make no bones about it, they were racist. But the reason I liked their page was because I wanted to see what vile tripe they were posting. But the algorithm doesn't know that. So does that mean you end up on the on the list because you, you like the page to keep up with the posts, even though you don't agree with them. You see how it's easy to fall into this category to get onto a list? The last time I remember lists being made and calls for violence against those on those lists, I think you probably go back to 1930s, late 1930s, 1940s Germany. Just saying, just saying. Can't use the N-word, because that'll trigger an algorithm and I'll be put on another hate agent list. Damn, this is getting confusing, isn't it? Right, so next on the list, it says, having tattoos of hate symbols or slogans. While Facebook did not... <laughs> having a tattoo? Facebook are judging you by having a tattoo? But, right, okay, whatever. While Facebook do not specifically mention which symbols constitute hatred, but we can imagine it is commonly believed in the media that a cartoon frog, oh come on, or the OK sign may be considered hate symbols. Are people still jumping about thinking that the OK sign is a hate symbol? If it's a hate symbol, you know I'm a big huge fan of Alessandra Cortez, right, or occasional cortex, as Popeye calls her. Was she making the, the white power sign? when she was doing one of her little rants on one of her lovely little cutesy videos on Instagram because she was making the sign. So is she one of these hate groups? Is she like in one of these banned groups now because she made that inflammatory sign? <laughs> this is terrible, man. This is shocking. I mean, that was all a, another LARP, another game started on 4chan and 8chan and people bought into it. Anyway, we go on. It says possessing hate paraphernalia, which isn't clearly defined by Facebook. Now, possessing hate paraphernalia, we're talking about a website here. How do they know what you possess? What right do they have to know what you possess away from Facebook in the real world? Now, I get it if they're talking about content that you've shared on their site, possession nine-tenths of the digital law, right? And we all know that once it's on Facebook, you don't own it anymore. So what what, what are they talking about? Hate paraphernalia, which isn't clearly defined. We know how they all hate on Trump and the right, right, right now, right? So is having maybe a MAGA hat make America great again? Is, is that hate paraphernalia? I don't know, I'm just asking the question here because Facebook don't exactly make it clear that they like to make it dead, dead, kind of ambiguous so you really don't have a clue what's going on. So we go down to the next one here. For making statements in private which are later made public. Well, well, well. Let me just read that again. For making statements in private which are later made public. By now, it must be evident that Facebook holds a huge amount of data of both offline and online on somebody. Now, we're all well aware on here that they're watching all of our messages, not literally somebody like me or you physically sitting there, eyes on messages, live time as we're doing it. Algorithms are watching, right? And we know all of these conversations are stored. But now I think we're starting to get into the world of the fact that the microphones on our phones, our smart TVs, our Alexas. Are you just thinking, well, Alexa, that doesn't belong to Facebook. Kev, this guy's talking mints. Remember what Facebook said a few months ago? 
We're all partners. It doesn't matter the different names on the doors and different logos. We share data all the time, right? Remember, they're all separate legs, separate tentacles on the octopus of big tech. They're all the same. They might have different logos. They might have different freak balls running their companies, but they're all the same. And it says, it goes on to say that speaking neutrally about events, individuals, or more that are considered hateful by Facebook. Whoa, 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 whoa. Speaking neutrally about events, individuals, or more that are considered hateful by Facebook. So, even if you say, say somebody says to you, that Alex Jones, what a pillock he is, eh? He's a right troublemaker, that one. Him and that Paul Joseph Watson, wow, race baiters, bigots, alt-right, you know, all the kind of stuff they would say. And if you turn around and say, well, I don't really agree with that. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I think everyone's entitled to their free speech. Can't say I agree with it, but you're being awfully neutral. So I'm sorry, but that makes you a hate agent. It's okay for you to sit there and spew obscenities and criticise and abuse anyone on the hate list, but don't you dare sit on the fence. You have to take one side or another right now in this culture war, thanks to Facebook. Because if not, guilty by being neutral. Because you didn't criticise somebody. For goodness sake. Where does this end? Where does this end? I tell you where it ends. It ends right now if we all just say no more. No more to this pathetic website. What does it do? Yeah, I get it. I speak to my mum every night. I speak to Nancy a lot. I speak to a lot of great people. We'd never have met them through Facebook. But I survived before Facebook. I'm sure myself and Nancy and anyone else I'm in contact with on there, we can find other ways. Because if we don't say no, they keep on pushing. And where does it stop? We literally had people with targets on their back earlier on today because Facebook said go for it. Green light the purge. And I ain't talking about the digital purge where you get kicked off social media anymore. You ever watch the film The Purge? Because that's basically what they were encouraging. They were saying it was all right, go trigger maniacs into doing something against these people. They don't care. They're, they're unimportant. They're unpersoned. They're people that you can't speak about. Or you can speak about them as long as you're saying you want to go and kill them or do something like that. How ridiculous is that? I never thought I'd see the day. Never thought I'd see the day it got to this point. I really didn't. Really, really didn't. So what's, what, what do we do about it, folks? What do we do? What, what happens here in the end, you know? Do Facebook say, well, you know, we're going to change models now. It's not working the way it is anyway. People are getting pissed at the way their data has been treated. Are, are we going to go to a paid version of Facebook? And you'll get like a premium, premium version where you can pay shed loads of cash and you'll retain all of your data kind of um, permissions. Maybe you can only afford a basic package and you have to give up some of your data to all of these companies that data mine it in the back end anyway. I don't know, I'm just trying to think what comes next. We've seen yesterday how many people in the UK alone are leaving Facebook. It can't go on like this. It's not just hit a plateau, it's now actually coming down on the backside. So we're going to have to watch because they're not going to let this go away. And if they do, they're going to come back with something that looks different, but it'll end up exactly the same. Exactly the same. So I'll get back to my uh, little article here. Let the blood pressure go down just a little bit. So it says, while the above pointers helped Facebook identify hate agents, I mean... By, let's think about it realistic, logically, right? After all those rules I went through there, even speaking neutrally or not taking sides against somebody that's deemed hateful gets you put on a list. Out of 2.4 billion users, and goodness knows how many of them are bots, but out of those 2.4 billion users, I would say probably 90% must be on their hate list, right? Unless you are an absolutely raging social justice warrior who virtue signals any time social media tells them to, who changes their picture to a flag any time there's an atrocity in any country, who pours their fake outrage. It's the most stupid non-events in the world. I bet you they're safe. 
I bet you they're safe. I bet you anyone with a pink hat as well, I bet you they're safe. Yep. If you've got the the, the kind of LGBTP, ABC, 123, whatever the hell it's up to now, if you've got that flag on there, I bet you'll just be tickety-boo. And that's nothing against these people, but I can tell you if you're virtue signaling in that way or you're part of that group, you're going to be okay on Facebook. That's a fact. And just me talking like this, just me talking like this, how many lists, how many people have I offended with my, my raising of my voice tonight? Maybe we should just sit here and talk like we're all little robots. We're all taking our lithium. We're all happy today. Mark Zuckerberg loves you and he wants you to know he's going to put two Zook coins in your account. Zuckerberg, you can take your Zook coin and you can shove them, clean up your... Yes, you know where I was going to put that, folks. You know. In his pocket. And Silomo, Kev is not yelling. Not yet. A little bit. A little bit. I am a super hater, Silomo. I am. You would class me as a very politically incorrect, probably in these times misogynist, um, toxic male. All of those kind of buzz phrases that you hear coming from these weaponized warriors out there. And who's weaponized them? The mainstream media and social media weaponized a generation. Probably lost us a generation. Can you imagine what it's like being born into this world right now where this is the norm? I'm so, so glad I can remember life before Facebook. I'm so, so glad I can just about remember life before the internet. Now, don't get me wrong, the internet, for me, it's been more good than bad. I'll happily admit that, and I wouldn't like to see it going away at all. However, there is a lot to be said about pre-internet life as opposed to post-internet life. You know, we definitely had far more physical relationships, and I'm not talking about hanky-panky and getting your rocks off or the kind of stuff Joe Joseph gets into on a normal night. I'm just talking about, you know, actual physical meetings in the real world, face-to-face, -face, like, you can touch somebody as opposed to like just pixels on a screen that kind of thing I think that was definitely better for us than the way things have turned out but at the same time same time double edged sword never have met all of these amazing people around the world so they give in one hand they take in the other but let's get back to this article before we finish up here I see if I can get to the end of it without blowing a gasket I'm loving these shows myself now. I used to be petrified of doing two hours. Now I don't think two hours is enough. If an individual makes either public or private statements that use hate speech or slurs of tiers one, two, or three. Now, tiers one, two, or three, that's the list that I went through there. It says, number one, three such instances in a statement. No, that doesn't make sense. Hey, let me see here. Let me see, folks. Let me see. While the above pointers helped Facebook identify hate agents, here is a collection of criteria that the tech giants used to determine if someone had indulged. <laughs> if you dipped your toe into a little bit of hate speech. Mmm, Kev is testing the waters with all of this talk about the, the rainbow flag and all the rest of it. Oh, I'm not testing the waters. Just ban me already. Trust me, don't bait me in. I'll go for it. So it says here, if an individual makes either one... Either public or private statements that use hate speech or slurs of tiers one, two, or three. So he doesn't even tell you what the tiers are. All right, it's saying if you make three such instances in a statement or an appearance. So the list of things I read out, if you actually are caught for three of those things, in the space of a month, or five of those things in the space of a month, that's you. So you, you get three lives, basically. If you do it three times, if the algorithm says, right, you hated on that dude three times there in that one statement, that's you gone. Now, I don't know if that means you can hate on three separate groups or people. And I'm not encouraging hate here, folks. I'm not sitting here like some kind of troll, troll army sending out the trolls to hate on people. Not at all. It's not like that. You know I'm not meaning it like that. But it says here anyway, it's not uncommon to know that Facebook often allows controversial policies and practices across its platform. 
be it banning conservatives on the platform or the rampant data scandals. There's no bloody scandal. It's their business model. People act shocked and all kind of, uh, wow, didn't realise that was going on because they didn't take the time to sit there and use their head and think, well, how the hell are Facebook a multi-billion dollar company? What do they do? How do they make money? All of us use this for free. Where the hell does the money come from? You see, if more people had asked that, it wouldn't be a scandal then when news comes to light about how they were using all of our information against us. Why? So that they could more specifically target us with ads. And when they're so specifically targeting you, when they're able to do that with all that information, and that improves the chances of you actually buying into one of the ads that you're looking at, well, that means they can justify up in the cost of the ads in the first place to these companies that buy them. It's insane. Truly insane. I wish I'd come up with the idea from a, like a money-making point of view, from a business standpoint. Damn, it's genius, man. you got all us people willingly handing over everything that we own, all of our intellectual property, everything. Just do do give it all over, yeah. You know, track me 24-7. Yeah, you have it, Facebook. You do, woof, do your worst with it. You're sitting there thinking, are these people stupid? I can't believe it's this easy. But it is. So anyway, a little drink before we get to the break. One hour down. I think I've seen whistles in the chat room there. I'm not sure. I had to kind of uh, cool down, stop seeing red for a minute. That's what it is. Ah. Yes. So tomorrow on the show, folks, before I forget, I'm going to be joined for my monthly visit in hour one by Don Wiskin. He'll be coming on to the show. We'll be talking about Extendivite. And then in hour number two tomorrow, we'll be rounding off the week in style because we have got my good friend, the spiritual warrior, Bill Bean. He will be in the house tomorrow. The digital house. That is, of course, if we haven't been targeted for extermination by... Mark Zuckerberg's drone clone army because uh, we're hate agents. Imagine that, eh? People you've interviewed on your show is enough to make you a, a baddie. You just know I'm a baddie. I've had so many baddies on here. People like Max Egan. Oh, baddie. David Icke. Oh, oh super baddie. He, he, he's like an uber baddie when it comes to all of this. There's two people right off the bat that I know probably has got me on the hated list. Oh, look at look at me. I'm absolutely torn apart. I'm going to lose sleep over this tonight. I might lose sleep over it just because I'm so, so angry. You know, we've let these big tech companies get to where they are right now, and they've done it on the back of all of us. It's crazy when you look at how all of this works and how they're using it all against us. So I'll be back after the break. We'll get into more of this. I've got other news as well. Interesting news, actually, about something called Generation AI. Now, this is coming from, get this, UNICEF. So when UNICEF start talking about how they're going to save the children, flip it round, folks. We're going to find out how they're going to AI the children after the break, got lots more besides as well. I've not even got through a third of my tabs that I've got open here. That's okay. We've got plenty of time left right here on KBS on TFRlive.com. Don't go anywhere. 